Hello and welcome everyone from the G35 Driver Facebook page and also r slash G35 over on Reddit. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to put the LED halos into your taillight assembly. Um, this is not an easy DIY process, so keep that in mind as you're going through this. Down in the description you'll find all the parts, materials, everything you'll need to do this, so let's get started. Part 1. Removal. So to get access to your taillight, you're going to need a flathead, 8mm wrench, and a ratcheting wrench with an 8mm deep socket. So let's get this trim off. On either side of it, you want to pull up firmly, right there, and right there. So these are held in by these slide clips here, and they really like to fall out for some reason, so if they do fall out, just push them right back in. No big deal. I'm actually missing one here too. So take your flathead, go ahead and remove these fasteners. They just pop right out of place like any old Nissan fastener. There's also one up here that can be a bit tricky. So once you get those up, go ahead and pull down your liner to gain access to the nuts right here for the taillights. There's also a third one here, it's kind of hidden. So go ahead and take your wrench and loosen these. Go ahead and take them off. Be careful not to drop them down behind your any of the liner back there. This is where the deep socket comes in handy. And take that right on out. Perfect. Next you're going to remove this plug. Just take a flathead, push it in a little indentation right there. The plug should pop right out. Now you can go ahead and remove the tail light. Just pull from the sides, being careful not to tug too hard on the harness. And you'll see a grommet here. Just pull up from the harness and it'll pop out of place. Then you pull it out of the hole. Easy as that. Now that that's done, we can work on the passenger side. Part two, opening. So there's a few different methods of opening the taillight themselves. Um, the first time I tried a Dremel and I wasn't really happy with the end result. The edges looked really weird and it may be partly in fact due to my inexperience with the Dremel but needless to say this time around I decided to go with this acrylic knife you can actually get this on Amazon and it's uh, it's actually designed for cutting acrylic it has a nice hooked end on it so uh, we're gonna see how that does for this application so let's get started with cutting but first we're gonna remove the harness here and this piece of trim so this harness is held in by these clips you want to make sure that you remove these before you remove the bulbs or you might break a bulb, especially that tail light right there, or the turn signal. So just go ahead and pull these all out. You want to make sure that you put those back in the right place when you reinstall as well or you might have fitment issues with your tail lights. Let's go ahead and remove the reverse bulb and go ahead and loosen this. This is for the brake light LEDs. There's a plug in here. Let's go ahead and unplug that. And you want to remove your turn signal bulb as well as your side marker bulb. So go ahead and pull those out and put those off to the side where no one will break them. Alright, let's get this piece of trim off. So there are two Phillips head screws holding this in place as well as three clips. Let's start with the screws. There's one on this side and one on this side. Once those are out of the way, you can come back in with your flathead screwdriver, hit these three clips here. I found it's easiest to hit the two on the side, and then the third is really doesn't have anywhere to hold, so it just falls right out. Good to go. Now we can set that to the side and move on. So on the cutting process, I'll tell you right now, this is a really, really tedious and time-consuming effort that you're going to make to actually get these things open, especially if you use an acrylic knife and hot knife like I'm using. You could go the fast route and just use a Dremel, but you might not get the best results and you might be unhappy with the quality of work that you get. So choose wisely. If you're good with a Dremel, go right ahead. But my best advice for using a Dremel, stay away from the lens edge. If you get really close to the lens edge, you're going to break off that ridge and it's not going to look good. You also don't want to double gouge when you're using this acrylic knife method. Well, let's get started. So 
So using the acrylic knife, just make a light score around the entire perimeter of the tail light. You just want to make a light score this first time around. And as you get deeper and deeper, you'll be able to make a deeper gouge easier. So I've gone ahead and switched over my hot knife, soldering iron, whatever you want to call it here. Call me crazy, but it actually worked pretty well. Um, shout out to Jose from G35 Driver. He actually recommended this method. I have my soldering iron set at about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I found it works pretty well. It doesn't burn the plastic too hard. So, yep, just go around the perimeter now. After you've made your initial score with the acrylic knife, the hot knife will have a nice indentation to lay into as you go around. So looking here, just about done opening it up. Probably been working on it for about four hours at this point. So very excited to be getting towards the end of this process on the first taillight. Also be careful that you don't crack or burn any of the chrome on the inside as you go around. It's too easy to do. Using a wet sponge you want to wipe off any excess melted plastic. Another big tip I want to tell you is don't pry with the acrylic knife, don't pry with anything on the lens. It's way too easy to crack it. And you'll see if you try to if you try to pry it open, you might just crack it. So it's better off to just not tempt it. So like I said before, be patient with the process. It does work, it does take some time, but the end result, if you do it right, is well worth it. And there we have it. After about four and a half to five hours, of really tedious work, we finally have that lens off. So I traded in those mechanic gloves for some latex gloves. I don't want to put any fingerprints on the inside lens here and have to clean it up later. What I'm doing here is removing all the small plastic burrs from the inside of the lens. You don't want to remove the ridge, just work on the small plastic burrs that were left behind. If you remove the ridge, it's not going to look right when you reseal the, the tail light. So next we're going to remove these three screws here. Another one here. And the last one's up here. This is going to remove the chrome assembly from the inside. You want to go ahead and get a flat tip screwdriver. Start working around the perimeter, removing that chrome piece from the inside. I believe that there's five clips that hold this in, two on the bottom, two on the top, and then one over by the side marker. It's easiest to start over on this side near the reverse lamp. Gives you a little bit more leverage to work with. Just keep going around the perimeter there. Undo those clips. 
you'll hear them pop out. And once you get all those clips undone, you'll be able to remove the chrome just like that. Perfect. All right, next we're gonna remove the LED circuit card assembly. There's a Phillips head screw here and another one on the inside of this. Once you got those removed, you go ahead and remove on to the four clips. There's one here, another down here. I'm using a pair of tweezers here to gain a little bit more leverage, but you can use a Phillips head, whatever you have nearby. And then there's two around the disc LED part of the assembly. So one up there, and the other one is down here. And once you pop those out of place, LED circuit card assembly should come right out, no problem. Now we can move on to the lenses. We're gonna start with the side marker lens here. Push in from the outside, and it should slide out like so. And now the turn signal lens, this one's actually plastic welded on the inside as well. So you might see a little plastic piece break off, no big deal if it does. Let me set that to the side. And now the disc LED lens here. There's a Phillips head screw that holds that in. Once that's out, there's two small plastic clips right here. Using those tweezers again to my advantage. Once those are out of the way, it slides right out. Now for the brake light lens, I didn't even bother. It was really tough to get a hold on those squeezers, so. So ignore the fact that they're painted already, I went ahead of myself. We were supposed to drill some holes in here, but we didn't, so we're doing it now. So you want to make sure that you have proper fitment when you're putting this in. This is very important because when you go to reseal your taillights, you don't want to scratch the paint when you're trying to put the lens back on. This is what I did on my last DIY. So I went ahead and made sure of the spots that I wanted to drill the holes for the LEDs themselves, for the for the wires to run through. And it's about a pinky's width apart, so about a centimeter or so. So go ahead and drill those in. I should have done this before I painted it, but learn from my mistakes. We're gonna drill the other hole here. Just like so. Go ahead and clean those up and retest fit your LED to make sure that the wires will line up with the holes. Then you're going to drill a couple more holes in here for fishing lines so we can secure the LEDs in there. So the rest of part one is just going to be talking about painting the chrome housing. So if you're not going to do that, go ahead and skip to part two and we'll start with wiring there. Part three, paint. So we've got the chrome housing prepped here. We use some alcohol to get that prepped up. And we're gonna be priming with the Rust-Oleum primer, filler primer. And for paint, we went with uh, Rust-Oleum engine enamel in black. So go ahead and give your can a good shake. Um, you'll know you're good when you start seeing the indentations on the bottom from the BB. And um, once you're ready to paint, go ahead and start laying on a thin coat. Um, you can see we went ahead and masked off the reverse light lens right there, so that thing was really hard to get off. Um, if you have trouble getting it off, just get some painter's tape and put it on there. Should be good to go. So wait about 5 to 10 minutes between coats. Just make them light coats, no need to put too much primer. I covered it up with a plastic box because I'm doing this outside. Alright, here's coat 2. And did another coat off camera. And now we're going to go on to the black paint. So remember, even light coats, you're just putting really light coats. You want to avoid dripping. Just make them nice and light. You can layer them up as you go. I put three coats on here, and it came out okay. Not too bad. You want to make sure that on your last coat here, you really get in all the, uh, all the details, like the LED holes right there, the inside of the circular housings, all the edges. You don't want to leave anything chrome. It'll stick out really bad. Alright, once you're done with that, we're going to start wiring. 